Welcome to this video where I'm going to show you how to implement a navigation for your website. What we're looking to achieve is something like this, where we have a number of headings at the top of our page, and when we hover over one of these headings, we get a number of links appearing in a drop down below that particular heading. If we then hover over another heading, we get another set of drop downs, and so on for each of the headings. Um, if you hover inside the drop down, the, the drop down will stay there and you hover outside of it will disappear. This is all going to be done in HTML and CSS, there's no JavaScript at all so it's going to be nice and sleek and um, it's going to be nice and quick. So let's start writing the, the markup that we need for this and then we'll move on to the styling afterwards. The first thing we'll need is a nav element and for those of you that aren't familiar with it, it's just a new element um, in HTML5. It's basically exactly the same as div, except it's got a different name. So that's going to be our container for the entire navigation. And then what we want is an unordered list. Um, and inside this, we're going to have uh, a list item per heading. Um, and that's going to have a, that list item is going to have an anchor inside of it. Um, for the actual heading, so if you click on that heading it will direct you to that page of the website and it's also going to have an, another unordered list within each list item which is going to, to be uh, the drop down. So let's let's mark up one of those and show you what it looks like and then we'll, we'll mark up another one for each heading that we want. So let's have a, a list item within my unordered list and an anchor which as I said is going to be the, uh, the heading um, that you see all the time. And let's just give the href of, of a hash for now because we don't want we don't have any other pages in, the, in this example. But you can just replace that with the page on the website that you want to direct to. And let's close off that heading and close off the list item. Um, and let's put some text inside there. Heading one will do nicely. Okay. Uh, and let's space this out a little bit to. There we go. Okay, and also within this list item, we'll want an unordered list, which, as I said, is going to be the drop down itself. There we go. And on the drop down, we're going to want a list item per link for the drop down. And obviously, we'll need a anchor inside each uh, list item that's going to be a link because we'll want that to direct to a specific part of the website too. So let's mark that up, close off everything, and let's put a name in here. So link A will do fine for now. Okay, so I think that's all done nicely. And let's uh, let's copy that and have five links on the drop down, and just slightly change the name for all of those, just so we can see it. And obviously, you can change the name to anything. And change the link to anything. Okay. Um, let's close off the unordered list for the drop down. And there we go, we have one heading um, now mocked up with this drop down. So if I, if I go to this blank page, which is where the, the content is going, there you can see it. And we'll need one of those for each, each heading. So I'm just going to copy that list item. And paste it out one, two, three, four, five additional times, and just change the the name of the heading there for each of the uh, of these list items. So as I said, you can change it to anything you want, and also change the paths in the H refs to anything you want. Okay, so that is all the markup done. Let's see what it looks like on the page. So it looks pretty rubbish at the moment, but that's all we're going to need, and we're just going to style that up. Um, and for the styling phase of this tutorial, I'm going to have my browser on the left-hand side of the page, like this, and then my text editor on the right-hand side of the page. And that will just mean that I can show you exactly what's happening um, as I update the CSS. So in the CSS, the first thing we need to do is create a nav selector, and uh, that's just going to target the navigation itself, the whole thing, and again, and I'm going to give it a fixed width, so a thousand pixels. And the reason I'm doing that is so that the navigation won't respond to the size of the browser, so they won't get any issues with headings, um, heading 
titles dropping down below each other and, and moving out of position, which is not what we want for a navigation. Um, and the next thing I'm going to do is target the, the headings themselves and their list items within unordered lists and just float them left just to get them all on the same page like that. Sorry, on the same line. Um, and for de to, to help with development, I'm just going to hide all of the drop downs by default because um, they're getting in the way at the moment. And also, we'll need them hidden by default anyway. So, this seems like a good time to do it. Let's, do, let's select those. They, this is the selector to get the drop downs, as I explained earlier, um, with the markup. And so, let's just do display none by default. Okay. Um, and now let's start styling this, uh, this header up. Or oh, sorry, these headings up. So I'm going to give the headings um, a padding in between each other. Uh, and the reason I'm giving them a padding like this is because if we were to give them just fixed widths, then if you had one really long um, title and one really short title, then uh, they'd, they'd still be the same size. So the box containing the text would still be the same size, but having padding allows the box to respond to um, the size of the, oh sorry, the amount of text inside it. So there we go. Um, and it's got a bit of a gap here, which is not what we want. So I'm just going to um, get rid of that. And that's because of a bit of padding that's put by default on our unordered list. So padding zero, so there we are, we can see all of those. Um, and let's remove the underlining and give that a different color. Uh, sorry, give each heading a different color. So to do that, I'm going to need to target the anchors within the list items within, within the unordered lists, which are going to be, which is where this text is held basically. So let's do text decoration of none and color of hash 666 which is just a grayish color so there we go that's that's what we have there so it's starting to look a little bit like what we have um, in the final product let's also give a border left to these headings um, so the dash border that you, you could see in the final product and so that's just going to be using border left um, border takes three parameters the first being the size of the border so I'm just going to have one pixel then the second one being the style, which is dashed, and then the third one being the color in this case. So there we go, that's looking good. All right, but of course we want the drop downs to appear. And let's let's do that now. Let's let's drop let's make the drop downs appear when we hover over um, a heading. And the way to do that is to use a pseudo selector, um, which is a selector that is only activated. Um, under a certain condition, and in this case, it's going to be hover. So let me write out the selector, and then talk you through it a little bit. So this is the, this is the full selector, and what this means is that when you hover over a list item within an unordered list within your nav element, then styles, the styles inside these brackets, will be applied to the unordered list, which is a direct descendant of that element that you've hovered over. So basically, when I hover over one of these headings. The styles will be applied to the unordered list that contains the drop down. That is the drop down. And the first thing I want to do is obviously show that drop down. So let's have display block inside of there on display none. And let me just show that working. So there you go. As I, as I hover over a heading, the drop down appears. Obviously, the drop down is not looking like quite like what we wanted at the moment. Um, it's pushing aside all the other headers and it's got a border and so on. So it's not looking quite right. And to stop it from pushing aside the other headers, we're going to give it a position absolute, and that allows us to um, put the drop down exactly where we want it to. Um, so if I was to, to show you what happened now for a refresh, you can see it, it's appearing um, in the same places, but it's not pushing the headings aside now, which is good. But with position absolute, what you need to do is give a position rel uh, position relative to a parent element and that allows us to position the absolutely positioned element relative to the element with position relative. So if I give position relative to this list item here, I can start to 
position this drop down relative to that element. And I want the drop down to appear next to that list item, aligning up to the left of it. So I'm going to have a nav unordered list list item unordered list left zero pixels. And so that means the left hand side of my drop down will always be uh, lined up with the left hand side of the heading. So there we go. It's always lining up with the left hand side of the heading, which is great. But now we want to style that up a little bit um, to make it look like we had on the, the finished product. So I'm going to do some of those styles. And the styles will be applied to the this selector here because that selector represents the drop down. Let's do width of 403 pixels. Um, and say so that'll define the exact width of it, like that. But obviously they're all uh, rendering, in, rendering in the line now, these links, which is not what we want. So let's give those a width as well. Where's my select for those? I haven't got one yet. So let's set one up, which is nav unordered list list item unordered list list item. And that'll select all of the links within my drop down. And I'm going to give those width of 143 pixels. There. So there we are, starting to look a bit more like what we want. But we need to get rid of the border and we need to push them down a little bit. So I'm going to do that now by having by having some styles in this selector here. So if I do margin top 12 pixels, that'll push it down a little bit. Padding top of t oh, padding top 10 pixels will push the, the links down within that actual drop down. And I want to give it a box shadow for um, the the sort of border for that drop down and I'm going to give it zero, one pixel, one pixel, and then the color, which is RGBA. And an RGBA color selector um, means you type in four values, the red value, green value, blue value, and alpha value, which is the uh, opacity. So I save that, show you what that looks like. Now, starting to look like what we had before uh, in the full example. Um, but I need to again get rid of that border and put a border on the top. So I'm going to do that now. So I have border zero there, and then oh no, actually we need border top there. So one pixel dashed. Hash da da da, and border zero on the the list items because that's where the border is being applied to at the moment, which is not what we want. So save that. Look at our navigation, and that's starting to look really good. But there's one subtle difference between our product here and the final product, and that is that when we hover over four headings four, five, and six on the final product, the drop down. Uh, renders in a slightly different place. The right hand side of the drop down lines up with the right hand side of the heading. And that's what we want to get now. So the way to do that is to apply a class to these three headings. And then and then what we can do with that class is command this drop down um, to align to the right of the heading element that has the class. So if we go back to our HTML, uh, we want to apply this class to heading four, five, and six. And the, the class is going to go on the uh, the unordered list for the dropdown. So let's call, let's give it a class of align right. It's a nice descriptive class name. And make sure we give that to each of these dropdowns that we want this to happen for. save that. Then we need to build a selector 
for the um, drop downs that we want to align um, up with the right hand side of the, the heading element. So if we do, if we select that class with this selector here, and then say for these ones, we don't want them to align up um, with the left like they usually would. So we do a left auto to get rid of that style and instead make them line up with the right hand side of the um, the heading element. So give it a right of zero pixels. And let's look at that. And that works really nicely on our heading elements there. And here we have the final product, a navigation for your website.